Today we're going to show some of the specific issues with 480 converters and fitment. A lot of the 480s are built for high horsepower applications and we're using a billet input shaft. There's about four different common suppliers on these input shafts and the spline cut may vary slightly. Torque converters, again there's about three or four different common suppliers that make torque converter parts that most of the manufacturers of torque converters are using. This turbine hub that is welded into the turbine here, the bore that the lockup o-ring fits into and the spline fitment can vary slightly. So even though the splines may engage fine, actually getting the lockup o-ring to engage can take quite a bit of force. You can see here I'm using quite a bit of force and it's not sliding on. That's what a lot of times causes difficulty installing the torque converter in the transmission. The torque converter when it's all welded together in one piece still contains all these major components. This is the impeller side with the impeller hub. We recommend on the impeller hub that you be sure if the converter builder didn't do so that you round off these edges on the flat. Don't damage the bushing area, but you can use a Dremel or a flapper wheel or, or something. Be sure you plug off the hole on the torque converter. Don't allow any metal to get in the torque converter. And slightly bevel these edges, radius them, so there's not a sharp edge there and it's not as quite as tight going into the pump gear. The impeller goes in to the transmission and when it's all the way in it will be bottomed out in the pump gear like we see there. Stators on next. And the turbine hub goes on and the lockup o-ring engages in this board here. So we're trying to put it together we're actually not locked in with the impeller yet, but when this tries to slip onto the O-ring, that's where it becomes difficult to get the converter to lock in. And it occurs at approximately the same time as the impeller hub is locking into the pump gears. That's where we feel most often the customers think the converter is in because it feels bottomed out and it's not. Most converter builders are aware of the issues where you have tolerance stack up between an aftermarket input shaft and a, uh, a billet converter hub, a turbine hub. And sometimes that just occurs. You may get a converter that won't fit because you have a transmission from one vendor, a torque converter from another, and the fitment hasn't been tested. Before we build the converters here in house, we check every turbine hub to be sure we can lock an input shaft in before the converter is welded together. And then, as needed, we bore this out so it fits over the O-ring. Uh, some converter builders may not be aware of that because they're not as familiar with 480s as we are. That's one thing you need to watch for. And rounding off the flats on the, on the impeller hub is also another thing that seems to help make these things easier to install. If you're having difficulty and it doesn't want to go in, you may need to uh, talk to your converter builder and possibly send it back and have them check that an input shaft can be installed in the torque converter without too much difficulty like that otherwise it could be an internal problem in the converter 